All right, thank you very much for braving the tube strike to come and see us tonight. This isn't really a microphone for the room. It's just so I can record it for, to put on the internet afterwards. So the lineup for this evening looks like this. We're going to ramble for a bit, let you know what's been going on with us and with Ember. And then Will is going to take us through Ember CMI, CLI Mirage. Um, Hugh is going to talk to us about Spree Ember. And then Nikos about the incredible Ember CLI test recorder. Um, before all of that, I'm going to introduce our wonderful sponsor, Sapient Nitro. Hi, uh, welcome to the square. As um, you've noticed, we're in a different venue tonight. Uh, we've got another event which is being held over the, the next couple of days in our regular room. And so we've invited um, the Ember meetup into here. Um, so I hope you enjoy the space. Uh, what it does mean though, is that I need to introduce you to a, a different uh, route out of here, um, just in case the, the emergency alarm sound. Um, we don't have a, a fire alarm scheduled for tonight. Uh, so if you hear the alarms go, it is a real thing and we, we need to get out. So to get out of here, um, you basically go out the, the same um, doors that you came in through and the uh, exit is on your right hand side through the glass doors. Um, and if you need to use the facilities, um, it's on the left hand side as you go out the doors as well. Um, so as, as always, Sapien are very, um, very honored to have Ember here. Uh, we're big advocates of the open source community, and it's great to see you all here. So thank you very much for coming. As Jamie said on on the tube strike night, and also with um, the the sun outside. So this this shows real dedication. So thank you very much. Um, as I said before, we're keen advocates of um, the open source community. I like to build my network of um, of developers, you know, from people like you. So if you want to pass cards over to me, I'm more than happy to to grab your details so we can link in. Um, so a little bit about us. So we're a, we're a global agency. We're dotted all around the world. Um, you're here in Eden House, which is our London office. We've also got um, another office in Black, um, not Blackfriars, in Battersea, uh, called Glassmill. Uh, we have some big um, big clients. So we look after British Airways. Uh, we look after RBS. We've also got MS and we also look after um, other banking groups like City Citibank. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Jamie, for, for coming as well on your bike. Um, and have a great night. So thank you. No, it's all fine. Okay, so now it's time for your announcements. So John, if you want to come up and give yours first. Oh, yeah, nice. I prepared it on my little screen and so the jellyfish starts. Oh, well, never mind. Can't see the legs. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Um, so my name's John Beer, um, CTO of Zapnito. We're um, an ex experts as a service platform. Um, so we just wanted to make a, a hiring announcement, basically. So we're looking to hire Ember developers. Um, if you've got a, a Rails background as well, then obviously that's a benefit. Um, it's quite a small team. There's just six of us at the moment, three developers and three salespeople. Um, we're a bootstrap startup, uh, self-funded, uh, through, through mainly through revenue. And so if you're interested in, in joining us, uh, then please let me know after the, after the meetup. Um, the reason for the logo is we've got jellyfish, um, uh, which is actually a little round jellyfish tank, and we actually use that as our build monitor, which is pretty cool. So it goes red when the build fails and stays green when, when it's green. So it's green most of the time, but, but the, and the jellyfish get angry when it goes red. So um, yeah, if you want to come and chat to me afterwards, then I'll tell you a bit more about what we're doing and, and how the company's set up. So. Thanks so much. Thank you, John. Yeah, that jellyfish is supposed to have legs. <laughs> yeah, it's just not quite enough contrast on the projector. Um, does anyone else have any announcements, jobs or otherwise? Come on up. Take that thing. Hi, uh, my name is Nadal. I'm front end developer at Property Partner which is essentially a stock exchange for the buy-to-let market. It means you can buy a portion of a buy-to-let property uh, and then resell it on the secondary market trade and get dividends based on rental return. We're hiring uh, an Ember front-end developer at the moment as well. Um, and so if you're interested, uh, just let me know and I'll tell you about the company a bit more. And uh, yeah, we, we can chat. Thanks. Thank you very much. We'll get everyone to um post these to the comments from the meetup as well, just so that you don't lose track of it. Anyone else have any announcements? Okay, 
So now we'll move on to Ember London news. Um, I'll start by saying that there are London Tomster stickers here, and also I've got some Austin Tomsters and some other stuff up here. Please come up and take stickers, um, if nothing else, for an excuse to start a conversation. So um, we're at these statistics, over 700 people follow us on Meetup. We've recorded and posted 54 talks online. There are some talks that I didn't manage to record, but we're getting those speakers back in so we can record them properly. And um, of those talks, they've been played over 16,000 times on Vimeo. Uh, the next meetup in August will be on Thursday the 13th. Uh, there's no project night for July because it's so nice and sunny and we reckon no one will come and I'm on holiday. And uh, so the next project night will be in August, exactly a week after the meetup. Uh, we have a website, emmalondon.com. Visit it to learn everything you need to learn about us. And we also have a Slack channel. And this has become more and more lively as things go. So uh, it's nice to be able to get conversation about Ember from people in the same time zone, but also that you'd be surprised how many prolific contributors there are in this city. So with that over, we move on to Ember News. Uh, this, for anyone who doesn't recognize this, there was a kid's TV show about computer games in the 90s called Bad Influence. And at the end of the show, they had what they called the Data Blast, which was, um, I think it was 30 seconds of cheat codes, basically sped up so that you had to record it on a VCR and then pause and freeze frame through. And, and of course, VCRs didn't do freeze frame very well. So every single frame was kind of like shuddering and mixed with the next frame and you couldn't understand anything you recorded. <laughs> so this is the data blast. So some examples of Ember in the wild. <coughs> First up, uh, Apple Music. So, that, so somebody uncovered that there's some assets from Apple Music that appear to be using Ember. And I'm not sure yet whether that means it's the UI within iTunes, but I believe it is. All the evidence points to that. Um, Apple definitely use Ember for some of their documentation and other bits of UI work. Um, if this is the case, it's extremely exciting. Uh, also, PlayStation Now, this is a big UI on your television, and that's built with Ember. Uh, this is the admin UI for console, which is one of uh, HashiCorp's um, suite of DevOps tools. So they, we've been noticing more and more lately that they use Ember for any piece of web UI, and that's, that's also really encouraging. They're really smart people. If they're adopting Ember, that's kudos to the project. And another, so, OK, Ember Twiddle is JS bin, but like you, would, like you would want to write something in Ember CLI. So it supports ES6 module syntax. It compiles stuff as Ember CLI would, supports HTML buzz, all the rest of it. So um, if you're sick of the shortcomings of JS bin, wonderful as it is, check out ember-twiddle.com. OK, so that's Ember in the wild. Uh, now we're going to do a, a, a roundup of where we are on the path to Ember 2. So Ember 13, Ember 113, sorry was released the day after after last month's meetup. And it's got some nice new stuff in it here. Yehuda blogged on that day a summary of what the, the 2.0 project is all about. And the, the big idea is that Ember and all of the pieces that go with it are going to start to move in lockstep as far as versions are concerned. So if you have version 113 of Ember data, you know it will work with 113 of Ember, likewise 2.0, 2.1, and on and on into the future. And that goes for Ember CLI as well, and Liquid Fire, and List View, and other kind of like core libraries, I suppose you'd call them. So I'm now going to hand over to, hand over to Miguel to talk about some of the new stuff in Ember 113. This is a conversation that happened yesterday, not yesterday, two days ago in Twitter. Uh, one of the new things in Ember 2.0 is uh, you can use the DOM much more closely to the usual way of using it. And Stefan pastes this uh, link to a JSVing where you can, show, uh, you can see how to create uh, an input with data binding uh, using regular the HTML and the action value. And action mentioned that is much faster. I want to know who faster, and I did. This is the old code, the regular code we are using in our apps, and this is the new way of 
uh, doing things doesn't mean you cannot use the new one but this is more verbose but closer to what the browser is actually doing and that makes this also much faster these are examples uh, this is the code rendering uh, 3000 inputs with the old code and the new code again old code new code I just flip in between routes you can see that it's around 50 times faster I have a demo here the demo is the this opens there we go okay here we are uh, well you can see we have um, the old routes and the new routes you can know that, notice that the switch to the new is pretty much instant and the switch to the old one takes a little bit but this becomes much evident when you type something here this and then you try to do the same thing here and it's just instant you can s notice the difference also in the inspector itself uh, there, Ember Render performance this is exciting because with just changing the inputs you get like this is the actual time in the old style so <laughs> this, is, uh, this is amazing and it's exactly the same uh, functionality just see I mean there are almost two orders of magnitude so go back Oop. there and this is thanks to the new actions uh, the new actions are a cool feature number 2.0 uh, now the action helper uh, can accept a function and basically what it does is creates a new function with the current scope as the this of the function and binds any other argument to the function and then the function becomes a regular attribute on the component you are passing the function to so that means that you can change functions and query the arguments so basically here you are creating you have an action say on the controller in the context whatever and you say create a function from the function uh, create an action from the function in the controller and bind hello hello as the first argument and the name of this action is salute okay then inside this component you can also do the same thing note that this is not quote because it's a regular attribute it's a bound it's a, it's a binding to the to the component itself and you can query the next argument and in the and you can do it again on the next and the result is you, your action receive everything and here if you log you are receiving the three arguments that you have passed and that allows you basically this is how it works under the hoods you have the function say and the f action helper is taking this function binding the context and the argument you are passing in and creating a new function and you do this over and over again and the, la the latest step you can invoke the function and just invoke the topmost function with all the by with all the binders applies applied and this is how you work I mean and a new addition is as you see the function is available inside the attributes of the component and unlike regular actions you can use the return value of this function so you can pass information back and forward between the components and maybe the grandparent ancestor of the thing and it's also much faster uh, on it, it, because it's just regular JavaScript. So the old f it, this is an order of magnitude, more or less. Uh, going to the demo again, you have this thing. This is um, I call it the collapsible uh, ac no, accordion menu, and basically you can uh, show things. It's like an accordion menu without the styles, and uh, a good example is e I don't have the code right here but the thing is I'm using the new actions uh, sorry not in here uh, here I use I, they have the exact same functionality and basically have you ever er, anyone else found uh, faced a problem where you need to uh, 
uh, rollback relationships in Ember. And usually, we, we you, when you use rollback attributes, you are only rollbacking attributes. But when you want to rollback relationships, you need to basically remove something. Imagine you are editing a, f uh, a form. You are removing things. But you can allow the user to actually cancel and still have everything there. So basically, you cannot just destroy when you click the destroy button. You need to store there. And when you save, then you destroy everything. And if the user cancels, you roll back. So basically, when you remove things, I am, I am just, since um, I have a, a few levels of nesting, I am curing and saying, this task is inside this tray. And I, when I click this, I am just sending to the root uh, the try and the task I am removing, and I store it in an array. And once I confirm this is done for this is gone forever, and if I roll back, everything appears. So this is a good example of how being able to add arguments to your function and pass these functions to kids, uh, children components allows you to send all the information to the parents and keep a very dry uh, interface on your components and make it make them as reusable as possible. Okay. Uh, and okay. that's everything I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miguel. So while we were talking about this in Slack, um, Rich pointed out that there is some performance work going on. The, um, the never sleeping beast that is Stefan Penner has decided to um, put the other 24 hours that he has hiding in his day towards some really serious performance work. So I think he's He's uh, fine tooth combing through the Ember code base right now, looking for the things that drive us crazy performance wise and finding them and fixing them. So um, that's Ember core. Ember 2.0 has also hit 113, so finally has become a stable library just prior to hitting 2.0. And there's some really good stuff in it. Can I get a show of hands who's used Ember 113 already? Ember data 113. Okay, cool. So Let's talk about the API changes. So previously, find was this very overloaded method on the store. Um, it used to be the nature of the arguments would decide exactly what it was going to do. But now we have a very explicit set of methods. So find with just the type has become find all. Find with a type and ID has become find record. Find with a type and a query string equivalent has become explicitly query. And find record, uh, sorry, query record is querying but just with one result, which we never had before. The, um, the methods which said don't make any requests, just get stuff from the catch, have become much more explicit too and consistently named. So now they're called rather than all, peak all and rather than get by ID, which I think was always private anyway, peak record. And the, the methods which were very explicitly go and fetch stuff from the server these have changed a bit. So it used to be if you said fetch all, it meant definitely make a request. Now we do find all with the reload true flag and find record with the reload true flag. Now this, this might seem like a step towards ambiguity in the face of what we've seen elsewhere. But it goes hand in hand with a new system for how to decide when records should be reloaded. So. Um, this is what we're used to. When there are no records in the store, or when you pass reload true, you call find all on the store, it's going to make a request to the API, return a promise to your app, but eventually return the records that it's loaded. Without reload true, if you've already got a cache of some records that you're ready to display, it will give those back immediately so you can render them. And in the background, it will make a request to your API. And when that data comes back, it will update the store and your UI will update accordingly. And the really nice thing about this is it can all be controlled at the adapter level. So on a model by model basis, you can determine when things should reload in the background, when things should explicitly reload in the foreground on a uh, collection basis or a single record basis. And so some examples of this I've seen. So the, the simplest is just for should reload all, you can just say, do I have any yet? If so, true, otherwise, sorry, if, if not, return true, saying, 
go make an API request. If not, return false saying you don't need to make one. We'll do it in the background. And you might say things like you might have a, um, an expiry attribute, either in metadata or otherwise on a model. So you can know, do I need to completely reload this thing or can I reload it in the background? Do I even need to reload it in the background at all? So you can have very fine grained control over when Ember data is going to fetch the new stuff for you. Uh, Ember CLI 2.0, on Tuesday, it hit 113. And on Wednesday, they snuck out a patch release. But basically, the API for Ember CLI is now stable. I think it's been put through its paces pretty thoroughly. So now it also rolls on to 2.0. And next month, they'll tag that release. And really, the only major migration in Ember CLI is that Brockfile.js is now to be renamed Ember CLI Builds.js. And this isn't, um, this isn't an attempt to disassociate from Broccoli. It's just that really, by and large, it's, it really is more Ember, Ember CLI specific than it is Broccoli specific, that file in your project root. Um, and Broccoli was always intended to be a, a library uh, put to work by bigger libraries. So this, this feels natural and fitting. So with that quick catch up of what's going on in Ember, uh, Will, if you want to come up and plug in, and bear with us for a sec while we get everything set up.